recording has started so in our last class i think we worked with uh school cap the beauty school cap uh, this medullary school we worked on this in our last class so let's continue with it Can we all see my screen? Yeah. Okay. Now, um, having committed those things, I, I, like I said, the essence of committing these things is to be able to receive them when we need to. In case we need to, we should be able to receive them. Another thing that you're going to use a command called git lock. Git lock. So let's run it. Git lock. So when you log git log, it's going to give you all the commits you've made, all of them. So these are the commits we've made. Let's look at each commit and how each commit works. So it's it's I didn't use them from the most recent to the oldest. This is the most recent commit, and this is the oldest commit. Again, it's I didn't use them from the most recent to the oldest so this is the most recent this is the last commit we made in that in that class and this is the first commit we made in that class each commit has something we call commit id and a commit message remember i told us that while committing in git you need to add a commit message you need to and i said the commit message will be used to retrieve that commit it's very important that you make the commit message to be as descriptive as possible so this here let's look at this commit this is one commit this one this is one commit in this commit we this is the commit id we are coming back to this in fact this is the most important thing here the commit id then the author then the dates and the commit message this is another commit. This is the commit ID. Of course, your commit ID will definitely be different from mine. It will. So, commit ID, author, date, commit message. Any question? Can I move on? Yes, sir. Okay. Next is this. You can also choose to fetch information. Let's say you want to fetch uh a particular number of commits maybe you don't want to fetch all the commits maybe because you might have you might make up to thousands of commits imagine i've been working on this project for let's say five years then you will agree with me that i will definitely have a lot of commits already i will because imagine i have a million commits now then will i fetch all the millions most times you only want to fetch the most recent commits most times you may not want to fetch the old ones. So you can run a command. So let's run the command. Let me clear this. So you can run git log hyphen n. Then the number of commits you want to fetch. If, if this is two, it's going to fetch the last two commits alone. These are the last two commits we did in this project if i say git log i think and let's say four it's going to fetch the last four commits so this n is the number of commits you want to fetch where is it i think n is the number of commit that you want to fetch in this particular project let's move on next i can fetch information based on the author that is based on the person that made that commit remember we did git config git config we configure a user and you can configure as many users as you want so of course all the commits here were made by this tolu ajayi now i can say let me clear it so that it should be reset button I can say git log 
hyphen hyphen author then i'll put the name of the author let's say Taye Abidakun. of course this Taye Abidakun did not make any commits so it's going to it's not going to fetch anybody uh, any commits but if i say git log hyphen hyphen author is tolo ajayi then it will fetch all the commits made by that person any question and all these commits were made on december 27 i can also fetch commits based on dates i can say let me clear it again so that it becomes clearer git log i can now say i think i think uh before yesterday before yesterday so it's going to fetch all the commits made before yesterday of course all these commits were made before yesterday i can also pick a particular date git log i think i think before then i can say the year 2020 let's say 2020 um, two uh that should be twelve or four let's say twenty eight so all commits made before twenty eight twelve twenty twenty two of course since our commits were made on twenty seven so it's it's right but if I say all commits made after let me play everything Uh, can we see it very well or oh, i should clear everything on the screen again hello hello everybody i think you should clear is it clear whichever one is okay i think okay. it's best if you clear it can clear okay okay let's continue again. so i can say after let's put the same date again 2022 then 12 28 now since there is no commit made after this date it's not going to fetch anything it won't so you can now combine this before and after together to fetch a commit made between a particular period let's say i want to fetch commit made between uh let's say 20 26 to 29 of 29th of December 2022 so we can say git log I think I before 2022 so uh, before 29 then we can now say I think I think after then equals to Let's say 26th of December. So it's going to fetch the commits made around that period. Of course, this all the commits here, uh, they fall around that period. So it's going to fetch everything again. So you can use it to fetch commits. Then uh, lastly, you can use it to you can use this commit message to fetch a particular commit. I can say I want to fetch all commits that have this to in their commit message i want to fetch all commits that have this to in their commit message so let's do that together that becomes git log i think i think g r e p grep this grep is the one that allows you to fetch using commit message i can now add the message i want to search for to i'm searching for to so it's good. This is the only one that has T O. Next, I want to fetch all commits that have this word file in its commit message. So we can say git log I think I think grep equals to file. So it's going to fetch all commits that, uh, that have files, this word file in its commit message. So uh, we've looked at how to do that 
lastly, you now want to check out to a commit. I think this part is where we are really going to. We've been able to fetch all our commits. Now, I want to return my application back to the state it was at a particular commit. For instance, I want to return my application back to the state it was when we made the very first commit. Remember, this is the first commit we made. We want to change our application back to the state it was as at that time. So what you're going to do is, let's open this. I'm coming. Uh, let me close this. Okay, I think this is the folder. Okay. So this is the folder now. So what you're going to do is, we want to tell this application, go back to the state you were when we made the very first commit. So what you're going to do is, Remember I said, uh, the most important thing here is this commit ID, it is. So you're going to say, git checkout, then you now type this ID. Don't worry, you don't need to type everything. Once you type the first six, six characters or even five, O F zero F seven two E, E four. Okay. 0F72E4. What I'm this checkout is saying that we turn my application back to the state it was when we made the first commit. So when I enter, oh, what's something? You have to press enter. Note something. Look at the files there. Look at these files. So I will come here now and press enter. So now it has returned my application back to the state it was when we made that commit note this before we executed that command this was main after executing it it changed to that commit id when you check your projects now you can see it's as though it has deleted all those files these were the only two files we committed when we made the first commit these two they were the only two files that we committed when we made that commit and of course the codes there also it would have changed the codes there uh, let me open my sublime text. So let's see. Let me just copy this. And it's, okay. So these were the codes that we saved there in this file, and also. In this file these were the codes inside those two files when we made the very first commit let's move on i want to go back to the present state of my application i'll say git checkout main if yours is master yours will be git checkout master so once i say master i'm sorry once i say git checkout main it will change this from this and return it back to main Good. So, it has changed, it has moved it from the previous commit to main. So, I'm back at the current state of my application. All my files are back. Let's do it once again. Git log. I want to return my application back to the state it was when we made the second commit. So, I'll, I'll just copy this. Maybe to this place. Oh. 289CB. So I'll say git check out, then I will paste it. So it has changed my application back to the state it was when we made the second commit. And of course, when you open it, you have this again, but then the content of the files would have also changed. We added a form, yes. There was no form in the first commit we made, but now there is form in the second commit. So we have if I change back to the first commit, you won't see this form again. So I can check out back to the main branch. I can say git check out main. Any question?
Hello, sir. Yes, sir. So, in order for you to return to a particular commit, it will be git um, checkout, then the commit ID. Yes, sir. yes, sir. And then if you now want to return it, why, why, which one is checkout main? So you want to return it back to the present state of your application. Um, understood. Thank you. You're welcome, sir. So, uh, before we go to Git remotes, we want to look at something called branching. Branching in Git. Uh, look at it as a tree. A tree. Now, a tree will have a root. Then that root can have many branches. That's the same Git also works. Let's discuss why we need a branch before we move on. You know, I told you that you can use Git to collaborate, that is, many developers can work on Git. And uh, sometimes when you are adding new features to your application, you might be skeptical, you might be afraid that probably this new feature might break your app, it might affect other parts. So you want to take your time to test it very well, very well, before you bring that feature into your main app i come again you have an application then you want to add a new feature but maybe you've not tested that feature very well and you are scared that it's possible for this feature to affect my whole app or other parts of my app so before merging it with the whole app i want to first ensure that it's fine so what I can do is, I can create a branch. Whatever I'm doing on that branch will not affect the main app. This is the main app. This is the main branch. Whatever you are doing on that, on that your home branch, on that new branch, will not affect this main. Do you understand? Do we Please come again. Okay. Please come again. Right. You want to... You are working on an application you want to add a feature but it's a common thing in uh, software development that when you create when you add a new feature it might affect another branch or another part of the application it might affect another part of the application so before adding it imagine okay good let's use our present example now Imagine I want to add a new input. Now, if I commit this now, if I commit this index.html, you know, uh, my application, we currently include it. But maybe this input, you are yet to test it very well, whether it's working to your taste, you are still working on it. But yet, you want to commit it. The reason you need to commit it is because anything might happen to your device. Anything might happen. Are we getting it? This new input, I say that it might have a bug. But at the same time, I still need to commit it. Because if I don't commit it, anything might happen. Imagine it's just a new feature. Let's, just use, let's assume this is a new feature in my app. This new feature, it is important that I commit it so that it will be safe. But if I commit it now, it automatically becomes part of the main. Please, do we get it? What I'm saying presently? Yeah. And anything on the main is being deployed to the user. Users are saying it most times. That's the, most times it works like that. Those things on the main, most times users are saying it. As you make this commit, yes, right? yes, you said, This anything? Can we proceed? Yeah, okay. So, anything on demand, most times the users are saying, Yes, it. so if I commit this input now, it automatically becomes part of the main. So if it has any bug, users will also be seeing that bug. If it's just a bug on it, so it may not even be a big problem. But imagine it's a bug that's affecting other parts of the application, then there is an issue. So what you want to do now is that you want to write a command. 
telling it that see I want to create a branch whatever I'm doing on that branch don't add it to the main branch under my own branch now I can test the way I want I can do whatever I want but then it's not going to reflect on this main it's not going to reflect in the main app it's just a branch and you can do whatever you want on that branch you can do whatever tweaking if it maybe you want to add a color and you just you are still testing whether the color will be best will be the best for that or not you can do a lot of testing there when you are now done when you are satisfied with it and you are now you know that it is now fine you can now match it with the, with this main branch do we understand yes sir okay so when you now manage to the main by then whatever updates you make will now be part of the main branch oh someone wants to join so i want to create a branch then on that branch oh, let's move our mic please so on my branch i can do whatever i want there then when i'm done and i'm satisfied that everything is working fine i can now say match this branch with the main branch any question from there okay let's now go to branch so let me first make this commits let me commit over here yeah. fmm um past me Your git add is just a dot. There's no file type. Yes, I just wanted to add everything. Git add all. So, uh, I've, I've committed that one. Next is I want to create a branch now. Let's see how to create a branch. To create a branch, the command is git branch. Then the name of your branch. You can give it any name. I can call it test. I can call it any name. Let's see what happens. When you create a branch, currently I'm in the main, right? I'm in the main. What Git is going to do is it's going to clone this current working directory. I'm currently in the main. It's going to clone everything here and duplicate duplicate it in the tests. I can make it. When you create a branch, it's going to check your working directory. I'm currently in main. So it will duplicate everything in main and bring it into test. So that this test will just be a clone of main. Whatever is inside main now is now available in test. All the commits we made inside this main is also available inside this test. Do we understand? Yes. yes sir. Okay. To so understand it, before running this command, I will say git log again and do something. So let's say, let's say, let's go to the very first commit. Git check out was f7 to e4 so i'm currently inside this now inside this commit if i come here and i say git branch and i give it any name what it's going to do is it's going to make all the commits here inside this place and make it available inside any name so what i'm just trying to explain is what whatever working directory that we have is going to clone it and make it available here. So let's go back to the main. So we are currently back in main. So I'll say git branch. 
git branch test. So I have created a branch called tests. The fact that I've created does not mean I'm currently there. I'm still on me, but now there is a branch called test. And this branch called test is a duplicate of main. So I can now move to test whenever I want. If I want to move to test, all I need to do is to say git checkout test. So I'm currently in test. Any question? So let's do some editing. Hello, sir. Yes, sir. No, thank you. Hello, sir. Yes, sir. No, thank you. Immediately after uh, doing getting the branch, do we need to immediately check out the test so that we can be on the test, or we don't? It doesn't matter if we check it out. Um, there is a command to automatically check you. Immediately you, you can create the branch and also test and also check out immediately. You can there's if I think the command is git um branch then uh wait git branch not git checkout checkout branch then the name of the branch let's say my branch so when I run this command now it will create a branch and at the same time check me out to that branch immediately oh what's going on it's Command is not correct. Ah, 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 what's going on? What's a valid object name? My branch. Let me check online. There's a command to both scratch and check out at the same time. Bit branch check out. Someone wants to join. Okay, yeah, I think B. Is it good? Check out. I think B. Yeah. It, check out I think B then the name of the new branch so this will create the new branch and at the same time it will check out immediately so I'm currently in new branch it will create a new branch and automatically check me out but most times well you may still want to do some things on your current branch before checking out to the new one you may so that's why we are most time you may have to run it one after the other git checkout that's how the git branch first create the branch then if you now need to check out to it you can now say git checkout the name of the branch do you get it okay okay all right so thank you sir so let's go back to the test branch now. Remember, this new branch will also be a clone of test because we checked out to the new branch. Uh, we created the new branch from test, where on the current working directory then was test. So this new branch will just be a duplicate of uh, of test. So let's check out to test and do whatever we want to do. Git check out test. So we are currently on test. So we have some codes here. So let me add new codes. Uh, we add input type submits. So if I save this and I commit it, the commit will only be inside 
the test it's going to be inside the test if i say git add then i add index.html if i say git commit hyphen m submit button added to index.html so i've committed now this commit is only available inside this test if i run git log you can see the previous commits remember i said that because we executed this command in the main you have all the commits in main but at the same time you have this last commit submit button added to index.html but if i check out to main and i run git log you won't see this one there because these commits they were made in the tests branch not in the main branch so if i go back to main now you won't see this commit again and this code will automatically disappear this line will disappear let's do that together so git checkout main so i'm currently in main now i'm back in main if i run git log you won't see that one there let's go you only have the last thing this was the last commit we made in main that's uh input type button is not there and when we go to the code also it would have disappeared it has disappeared any question hope it's not confusing like the way it is the way we are checking out checking in and the likes hope it's not confusing hello everyone not so much sir okay let's quickly revise what we've done so far number one uh we i said we can log out your commit message uh, or your commit by running git log this git log will log out all your commits for you then you can also log out uh, you can also log based on maybe you want to log the last three commands uh last three commits you use i think n and three so this is going to lo log out the last three commits then if you want to log uh log it maybe using the commit message you want to check everything that has last name in its commit message you can say git log i think i think that equals to last name so it's going to find go to the commit message and fetch all those ones that have last name in their commit message then we talked about branching about oh no before talking about branching we talked about how to check out to a particular commit maybe you want to return your application back to the state it was at a particular moment so you're going to say git checkout then the commit id so let's check out to this one this is 3 a just copy some of the oh sorry you don't use ctrl c yeah it's not going to work you right click and copy it also will not work so then git checkout then paste right click and paste so i'm pasting the commit id instantly it will take my application back to the state it was when we made that commit <coughs> sorry so if i want to go back to the main branch now to the present state of my application all i need to do is to say git checkout main so it's take me back to the main so i'm currently back in in the present state of my application the next thing is i want to be able to do some testing maybe in my application i want to experiment with things and i don't want it to affect the main branch this is the main branch i don't want it to affect it so i can do whatever i like there when i'm done i can now merge it with the main branch so to do that so run git branch then the name of the branch branch name so let's say you run this oh i, I wrote bin branch name git branch branch name so this will create a new branch for me if i want to check out to it all i need to say is git 
check out then the name of the branch and i told us that what happens is when you create a branch it's going to copy everything inside the current working directory and make that available in this new branch so meaning everything inside main now is available inside this branch name so what we want to do now is uh, you can also now commit here yeah, whatever commits you make is inside this branch it's not going to affect the main branch whatever commit you make you can make as many commits as possible all the commits will just stay inside that branch but not in the main branch it's not going to affect the main so can we move on yes sir okay next is this remember i think there's a message for you there's a message for you on the chat maybe you check that okay let me check okay uh all right i think i've, I've seen it now i will respond to it immediately after the class okay. thank you next is this uh remember the essence of creating a branch is to add some codes experiment with it when we are done we can add it with the main branch like so that's going to be part of our main app now remember i said most times when you deploy your app you are going to be deploying whatever is on the main most times it works like that most times you deploy the main branch so you know the other time we created the test branch we added this line to the test branch oh it has been deleted let's go back to the test branch so that we can have it back i'll just say git checkout test so we're currently in test now my code should be back now we added this input type submit to the tests branch so maybe i'm satisfied with it i now feel that oh it can now be part of me do we understand i'm okay with it i'm satisfied with it i now feel that it can now be part of the main branch so let's do that together so to match test with main or to match any other any branch with the main all you need to do is first go to the main git checkout main so i'm currently oh i wrote h instead of k let's do it again git check out main so i'm currently in main so i want to match test with main i will now say git match test git match test what i'm just saying is match whatever is inside inside text match it with the main so it's going to take all the codes in test now make it available also in main so that the two of them will now be at the same level do we get it so i've marked it if i go to my code now you will see it also remember the other time it was not there this was not there on the main it was only available in test but because we've matched the two of them together now this is now also available in main any question this is magic you said this is good magic uh now you can also delete a branch maybe you are done with that branch or you just feel you don't need that branch again or anything you want to delete a branch uh please but i need you need to be careful while deleting a branch most times if you try to merge a branch let's say i created a branch and i made commits on it and i'm here to merge it with main if i try to delete it it's going to warn me that see what you are trying to do is risky um, of course it is because you know all the, all the codes are available in that branch they are not yet in your main so if you try to delete it it will warn you that see what you're trying to do is risky but if you merge it with main you can now comfortably delete it is not going to warn you so let's delete the test git uh, branch then the delete i think d this is soft delete. This, I think, the then the name of the branch. You want to delete the test branch. 
good so it has deleted the test bunch if i try to check out the test now it check out the test to tell me it doesn't exist because you've deleted it any question can this be recovered again you said can you then recover test again ah uh, can this be recovered but i doubt it's because that since you've already imagined with this but then you can you can run your git log to see those things you did there it's going to tell you that uh where is it this you can check out to any of these since you've merged it with the what is it called since you've merged it with me you can check out to any of these things now i can check out this last thing we did there i can check out to any of these commits do you understand sir yes out. thank you okay you're welcome sir uh, so, my own is you said a soft delete is there another type of delete Yes, there's add delete. If I'm yet to commit, let's add some codes inside. Let's check out to this new branch. Git check out new branch. Okay, that's done. Okay, we are going to okay. Let's just have. I will delete. Uh, let's add. Let's just add more code here. Let's say we have P. How are you doing? I will save it. Run my git. Add index.html git uh, commit have an m new paragraph added then let's now go to uh, the main branch git check out main now if I try to delete this new branch it's going to warn me because I'm here to merge it with main git uh, branch I think D then the name of the branch new branch this branch is not fully matched you can see it's warning me so it's not this is not possible but if I, I can force it if I still want to delete it I will use capital letter D meaning I know what I'm doing I intentionally want to delete this thing so this will go. Do you understand? Okay. Yes, yes, yes. Okay. Right, so. so what this is doing is telling me that I know what I'm doing, delete it, I know what I'm doing, just let it go. So next is we want to now push our codes online. So let's see how to go about it. I will log into my account. So next is I will create a new repository new. Then give it a name. You want to create a new repository while creating a repository you can either create a public repository or a private repository that's because of the difference between the two this is public this is private give it a name let's just call it my git app or uh, let's say medullary school app medullary school I have this repository. I'm giving it a name. Next is 
you have to say whether it's public or private public means everybody can see it everybody that goes to your profile can see it and when they see it, they can clone it they can copy this project i will tell you how it works now we're going to copy a project now anybody that sees this might go to your profile and copy it but if it's private only those people that you add will be able to when you in the next thing you're going to see how to add collaborators and others so only those people but if i go to your profile i won't see it if i'm not part of the collaborators on this project if i'm not i won't be able to see it if it's private only you and your collaborators can see it if it is public anybody can see it anybody whatsoever then okay read me file this is if i just it's a description of your whole project you may just leave it then create repository but before we create repository i want us to first copy one project so that you see how it works when i see that i said if it's public anybody can go to your profile and copy the project so i'll just come here and search for a project maybe i can search for um calculator let's let me go to one of the students projects uh one of our past students Enough, if I copy the project, it won't even tell me that I, it won't tell the person that I'm stealing the person's project. So that's how funny it is. It won't. So, so let's copy Pastor Where Yes project, one of his projects. Um, let's, let's see. Let's copy his Ludo game. So let's say i will i want this project i want to see it so i'll just come here click on code copy let's let's, let's go let's go by it again on get to the profile it's going to list all the repositories you can check all the repositories it has 21 repositories at the moment so you can now copy any of the repositories. Let's say I want to copy this little game. I can just click on it. So, code. I click on code. Copy. This URL, this is all I need. Click on this URL. With this URL, I can copy it. So, I'll just go to my page. Create a new folder. I call it just I just use new folder. I will run git bash here. So I'll say git clone, then I'll put the URL. So if you go online and clone that project for me, I'm make it available in my own codes. It's cloning it, cloning, cloning, cloning. Good, we are done. So let's go, let's open this now. Uh, go to the desktop. This is it. So I can view his project. I can check the code if I want to. This is the calculator. Ah, this is the little game. Sorry. Um, I can bring it to my own code and look at the code if I want to. So this is it. Any question? Hello, everybody. Yes, sir. So I'm just showing us the implication of making it a public project. Also, of course, when employers want to employ you, they'll go to your Git application and see. So they, are, they won't be able to access the public repositories. They will be able to access the private ones. So having checked that now, let me now go back to my own and Create a repository now. So I'll create a new repository. I'll call it Medilary School. Then you can describe it. Of course, it's fine. It's good to describe it. You can make it a public or private. I'm making this public so that anybody that comes to my profile can see it. Then create a repository.
so i've created a new repository what i now want to do is this i want to push all the codes here inside this place i want to bring it inside this new repository so it's telling me to run all these commands but ignore all of this ignore 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 now start from this place if yours is master remember i said something in the last class that let me close this one i said something in the last class that it's possible that yours is main and not master uh, yours is master and not main in case yours is master and it is not main you will need to first run this command so this command will change that uh master to main do we get it Show you Walla. Yes, yes sir. sir. Okay, thank you. Thank you, sir. So this command will help you to change that it to main. Next is this. Well, we would have used this. This in fact, this, this is all you need, these two commands. But then it made some adjustments, I think, last year or last two years. So that you need to now instead of using this, you need to do something else. Let's look at the something else. We want to look at the something else. Number one, we want to create something called access token. For security reasons, anyway, it was done for security reasons. We want to create something called access token. So, go to your settings. Settings. Then it should be, yeah, SSH and JPG, uh, GPG keys, yeah, go there. I'm coming, I'm coming, I'm coming. Yeah. Access the things, access the things, access the things. Okay. We want to create an access token. Um, should be able to create one. Then settings okay developer settings yeah so on that profile go to developer settings developer yeah come here again go to your settings let's start again go to this place settings then go to developer settings So personal access token. Go to personal access token. So you can generate a token. Generate new token. So you can describe this token. Maybe what you want to use this for. Uh, I can just say. Sorry, students. So here is the token. I oh, sorry, here is the name, the notes. There are many days do I want it to be like the expiration dates. You can increase it, you can reduce it, whatever one. But after that particular date, it's, you know, you won't be able to use that token again. It's going to expire. Then what do you want to do with this token? I'll just give it the minimum privilege. Admin public yeah. generate token. Generate token. So I've generated a token. Now this token you need to keep it. If I research this page, I won't be able to see this token again. I can't. So you need to write it down. This is it. Uh, make sure to copy your personal access token now. You won't be able to see it again. So even if anybody comes to your 
a, a git account the person will not be able to see this token so you need to copy it and save it somewhere so i've copied it do we get it let me just paste it somewhere this is my token so i will now go back so i can use this token now from now to the next 30 days 30 days so i've created the repository we've created the repository the other time hope it's not confusing This is the one we have, medullary store. Show you what, please, are we getting it? Are we lost? If you are lost, say I'm lost. <laughs> if you are lost, say I'm lost. If you are getting it, say I'm getting it. I'm getting it. I think the class is getting too long, but I want us to just stand up it today so that we can move to next time. So, like I said before now, how we have had to do was just to run this command. But now we need to now attach our token with this command. You need to attach this token with this command. Let's explain what this command does. Get the mod, I will copy this. And I will bring it to my code. Remember, I've committed everything here. I've committed everything. That's why you don't need to do all of this again. That's why you don't need to. So let's assume I'm yet to commit. I will first, you know, git in it. We've done git in it. You don't need this. You don't. You are not adding with me far. Git commits. As time goes on, you'll be adding readme file, but for now, let's just go to the very basic things. Git commits, you've committed. Git branch, I told you this will help you to change your main, your master. If, you are, if yours is master, you to change it to main. If yours is main, you don't need to run this command. You don't need to. Then next, git remote, this is next thing. We want to run this command. So let's discuss the meaning of this command and what it does. I think I've copied this. I think it's the right word. Now, let's take it one after the other. We have two gates. We have the remote gate and the local gate. Everything we've been doing all this while has been the local gate, meaning that these changes are just on my system. They are not online. But Git remote tells Git that, see, I want to start dealing with remote. This is the remote. This is remote online. So git remote is just telling you that okay, this command is for remote. Add origin. Let's discuss the meaning of this. You see, um, I will do something now. I will delete this mean this origin. And let's discuss what this means. Git remote at this URL. I want to say okay, my remote, my remote server is this URL. My remote server, whatever I do now, I'm saying that it should point to this. So it should point to this URL. But the reason for adding origin is this I don't want to be using this URL at all times. I want to give it an alias, like a name. So that's the sense of the origin. You can give it any name. But the convention is to use origin. But you can give it any name, it will also work fine. Oh, sorry, git remote add origin. Then this URL. What I'm saying is, I'm giving this URL an alias called origin. So if I want to refer to this URL, I don't need to type this URL again. All I need to do is to call on origin. Once I call on origin, it's going to point me to this URL. Do we understand what is happening there? I'm sorry. <coughs> what if we now added um, different uh, remote or stores from the GitHub online. Are we going to name all of them origin? 
No, no, like I said, this card is going to be another name. You can use any name. The convention is just to set the default as origin. Or you can call it any name. It will work. It will work. And the URL. Do you understand? Yes. Okay. So, what I'm doing here is I'm just giving this an alias called any name. And once I call on any name, then it will point to this URL. But like I said, for security reasons, you can't use this URL like this again. You need to attach your token to it before making use of it. You need to. So let's look at the little changes we need to make now. The changes is this. You put your username here. My username is Atom21. This is it. Uh, okay. Atom21. You put your username. Then you put a colon. Then you put your access token. Let me go and copy the access token. Paste it. So this is the access token. Then you put apps. That's what you are doing. We just added your username, colon, your access token at before this github.com. Before now it would have been github.com, this, 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 but now you first add your username, colon, your access token and at github.com slash every other thing any question your username colon your access token at that's all you're having do we get it yes but i have a question okay sir what's the essence why adding what's the reason why are they the token? Why? What's the okay? Okay, so advantage. for security reasons, if I try to push it without this token, it won't work. Git has made some changes. Let's try to push something without this access token. It won't go. If you tell me I'm not allowed, I'm not permitted to. So in 2021, also, Git made some changes to the GitHub such that this command will no longer work. It requires access token or SSH key. For now, we are using access token. You can use SSH key also, but we are not going into that. So this command will not work again. It will, before it used to work, but now it won't work. It won't. So it requires you to include the access token. So your username colon your access token. You will understand. Please, do we get it? Yes, sir. Okay, sir. Yes. So let's run it. Press enter. So I've added the ball. Look at the alias. My alias is any name. So whenever I want to push now, I will just say git push any name main. It's not going to be origin since we didn't name us as origin. So you're going to say git push i'm currently on the main branch so what it's going to do is it's going to go to this any name this url and create a branch called me online then it will push everything inside this main and make it available in this main do we get what is happening remember any name stands for this url so to go to any name and create a branch called main, then you now copy everything inside my own main, inside this current main, and push it to this main. Do we understand? Please, are we getting it? We are almost done. We are almost done. Okay, so it's doing. It's, it's pushing it. Let's wait a bit. Good. Is there now? Is online? Just go online and refresh. So 
so all the codes are available here next is you want to host it you want to host your git page so that anybody like you can just send the link to anybody and the person will be able to see your git page but before the hosting let's look at some of those things you might that might happen to you you might want to add new codes hello, hello sir yes sir yes sir uh, thank you. okay uh okay let's uh, let's stop here tonight okay we have new codes then i will record a short video after tonight then i will send it to us that one we just focus on hosting how to host it online do we understand just it's not going to be it's going to be before the next class i'll send the video before the next class so that i want us to start the next thing in the next i don't want us to come back to git again we we'll still have many things to cover so i don't want us to come back i'll just record a short video if you have any question we or any you with the video just reach out to me i will explain so uh before we go today this is a common practice you might want to add new codes that is after pushing online maybe you still want to add some new codes to your project maybe i want to add another input for email address it's very simple and straightforward email so just commit it git add the name of the file git commit hyphen m email address to index page then push it git push any name main i hope you understand what is going on now you don't need to add again you've already had it you've already had that any name you don't need to run git add any name then the url again you already have any name as a you as an alias just say git push any name main once you push it it will also push this new one online so it has pushed it go online now and refresh you will see it there this is the last commit email added to index page so we're going to stop here tonight so i'll record a short video to explain how to host it any question uh one tiny question sir okay sir uh you know when we when we are writing codes in sublime text yes. so say we close it and then we come back we'll still see all our line of codes yeah yes. but in git when you close it it's all gone so is this the git log that you used to refer back or is there something else no uh, it's gone like Otila, that's, so that's Otila. <laughs> That's that's where it works. Once it's gone, it's gone. So you can just maybe you can watch the video and just write out the commands. Okay, no problem. Okay, Thank you. What you can do is this. Let's see. Let me clear all these commands now. If I want to see the last command, just go to your keyboard and press the up up arrow. This is the last command I pressed. If I want to see the second to the last command, up arrow. Up out. but the thing is once i close this i can't do that again this can only happen before i close it okay okay i see all right any other question all right thank you very much please push all your projects to git the reason we actually included git in stage one is because we know that anything can happen to your laptop tomorrow please anything can happen to your laptop tomorrow don't learn the importance of git the hard way push all your projects to git each project will be a new repository if you want to get a new project let's say i built a school app it will be one repository if i let's say i built a calculator it will be another repository let's say i built my profile it will be another repository so each project will be a new repository so um so that's it you just push it to that repository thank you very much then for those of us in ai a message will be dropped for us tonight 
have a lovely night so i won't be the one to continue the class i think uh yeah. i don't know if we continue from yeah ah i'm all right i shouldn't even be the one to take us html if so much you'd have been the one to take us html uh you would have i believe would have taken us much better than i did but then i'm only here to take i should only take us kids and we should have even finished kids before now we should have finished it so uh what you're going to do is starting from our next class and i start we come in the next time i'm going to show up will be when we get to stage two let me get to the next stage so uh, the instructor is going to take our css and bootstrap and uh, for those of us in ai artificial intelligence a message will be dropped for us tonight uh thank you very much have a lovely night first appreciate you for coming thank you very much you're welcome, you're welcome sir.